Alrighty, so we've got our little light bulb in there, but we've got no light, and we, as we can tell, things are looking um, mighty dark. That looks cool, but it's not a very good representation of how a light should be illuminating this little room. So I'm going to do a couple of things. Now, remember that whenever I create a light, um, it's going to have the this this sort of weird thing where uh, if it's inside of a mesh that's actually uh, casting shadows, it's the equivalent of putting a flashlight in a shoebox and then closing the shoebox up. You're not going to see the light because the light is being blocked. Um, so right now my lamp is one piece. And um, I could do this a few ways. We're... It's all one piece, and I think, let's do it. I could separate it, and then that way um, the shade is different and has different properties to it. Let's see what it looks like if I keep it as one piece first. And um, the effect that I want is two effects. One is I should have a cone or a circle of light coming out from the lampshade at the bottom, hitting part of the wall, the table, and the floor, and then potentially another smaller... Uh, elliptical shape coming out in a cone hitting the ceiling and possibly part of the wall depending on um, how close the lamp is uh, to the wall itself. So, so we'll push that up against there. Push that up a little bit closer like that. Okay. So something like that. So I'm going to create um, there's a few ways I could do this, but I'm going to create a volume light. And um, my volume light, oops, I'm have to move. I, since I moved that, I forgot the uh, little bulb was not um, attached, which is fine because if I had combined it, it would uh, inherit the properties or settings of the um, of the lampshade, which or the Part that I'm putting it in, which means that um, whatever sort of effect I have of it, not or properties of it, casting or not casting shadows or anything, or smoothed out temporarily or things like that, is going to transfer over, and I don't necessarily want it to. Okay, that's fine. All right, so. Uh, I made this volume light. There she is. And the way the volume light works is that, similar to a point light, which means light's coming out from all directions of this source, except that what's different is I have to scale this up. And this circle, the spherical shape around it, is the area that is going to be the area of influence. So in other words, if I have it only this big, if I had left it really small, it would have virtually no effect on my scene because it's only affecting what's inside of this area. So what I want to do is I want to move this little guy into the center. And roughly where are that? Remember, we told the light bulb that it's not going to cast shadows. So I can put a light inside of it. And it'll be fine. So I'm thinking maybe right about there. Should be fine. Now, right now, this little circle's not really uh, doing that much. So I want it to hit a much bigger area. Maybe it's going to affect about that much. Okay. And this is, you know, I can edit this or change this. Maybe we'll tighten it up just a little bit. Uh, but just the way it is, I want you to see what that looks like. So if I do that, and I'm just pulling back enough so I can see a little bit of the surrounding area. And what we can see is part of the effect that we want, okay? 
Um, this is just because the final gather and certain it's still calculating. We haven't adjusted the shadows or anything like that. But essentially what we have is uh, the lampshade currently is blocking this light source. Uh, but it's coming out and pouring out of the bottom and out of the top. And that's to be expected. The only thing that's immediately wrong, besides fine-tuning some of this in our pitch black dramatic shadows, uh, no bounce light going on, but um, this should be illuminated and the walls should be much more illuminated and lit up. So this is where um, a second light is going to come in and I can also tweak out some of these uh, different elements. Now right now um, this one light is using ray trace and that's partially why I'm getting these really hardcore shadows and um, they you know they're good but they're just really really ridiculously sharp and I'd have to increase the light radius and the number of rays to soften this out the radius you can think of as um, how much do I want this to spread out? And the rays would be almost like you could think of it as a resolution. So the more I spread it out, the more rays I need to compensate to fill up and give myself a smooth gradation. Otherwise, I'm going to get really noisy uh, looking shadows. So just remember that uh, typically I'm going to have a much higher number of rays than I am radius, but when I start cranking this up, I've got to crank this up more. Um, so, or I could go, it's a very short area, I could actually use a depth map shadow. So we're going to keep this image, and let's see what that looks like when we do a depth map shadow. see it's not doing too much <laughs> part of that I think is the resolution I don't have to there's a couple of settings I'd have to check but you know what let's just use ray trace I'm gonna increase the radius to say about Five and the raise to about ten. Now, what we're seeing, even before it's finished, is that um, it's noisier and uh, it's spreading it out which is somewhat softening these edges a little bit, but uh, it's still a bit noisier. Look how much it was. Look at that difference. So it softened it out, but that's the noise. And that's because the rays aren't high enough. Now, the only thing to be careful of is when you're doing this is that historically the more uh, the more you crank up numbers, that oh, it doesn't always equal to, oh, it's going to be much better. And often it means longer render times. So do basically what you need to do and try not to do too much more. And what we're seeing is that it's taking longer to render, but it's giving me a smoother transition. See? Now, uh, we need another light in here. And we're going to do a little trick. A couple of things. One, I'm going to take this light. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to lift it slightly up. So now I have two lights. You can see they're just offset slightly, and that's just so I can really just uh, grab one a little bit easier than the other one. The one on top is that second one. Okay. 
And uh, this one I'm not going to worry as much about. I'm going to drop this back to, let's put this at three. And um, now I'm going to do something different. I'm also going to change this. I'm going to give it a little bit of color, a little bit of a yellow-orange kind of color. And um, I'm going to light link it so that it is not, basically, it is not touching the lampshade itself. Now, I could do it so it's not affecting the lamp itself and it's just coming out from there. Um, it will brighten up things a little bit more. But, well, let's try it with that. Let me show you how this works. I have the lamp selected. I'm just going to call it... Let's, lamp or let's call this one table lamp okay so I've changed its name I'm going to go and select that's that new light I created the duplicate that's a little yellow orange with it selected I'm gonna go to Windows Uh, relationship editors, light linking, light centric. And with that basically, there's the lights I have. This is light number two. And everything highlighted are the things that it's affecting. And what I want, here's the lampshade. selection there it is there see so as I select things here's the cool thing it just selects it in here and I just want to make sure I check it and uncheck it and make sure that it is not affected by that light and that's one way let's see how that works we may have to tweak that out but let's just take a look, see. So now what's happening, and I may have to I may have to tweak this out a little bit. So we have the white light coming at the bottom and at the top. So we have a soft white light bulb that's coming down here, and then we have this yellow-orange light coming out here, which is going to make sense when we actually make this lampshade a tan color. It's just about done, but you see how so before, after. Sometimes you'll have to refresh this, you know, decide to kind of go back and forth and then it shows the new the new light. So that part's working okay. I'm going into this guy and I'm gonna tone its um intensity down just a little bit and what we have here is the color range and this is its fade out from the center intensity going outward and I can actually add a little bit in there and say you know what maybe this one I can actually adjust a little bit 
and here's where I'd go in and change how bright or how dark that is. And that's just going to adjust the intensity. And this is a good way of if I want it to be, um, you know, like fade out a little faster so it's hotter towards the center and goes out a little quicker. Um, and the overall intensity. And I'll just give it just a wee bit more saturation. We'll try that. This is where you have to experiment just a little bit. And that might be a little too much, but we'll take a look. And once again, this is going to be based off of... Um, yeah, it's too much. Uh, this is going to be based off of what aesthetic you're trying to get. So I'm just going to hit escape a few times. I don't need to see it go out that far. I'm going to kill this guy here and just leave the intensity lower, but just more saturated. And then the last thing, because this tape's getting a little late or long, I'm going to make a new material create materials Lambert. I'm going to call this material lamp shade matte. And I'm going to make it kind of this tannish color. So tannish brown. There it is right there. And mark this. And I want to select in the face mode. And I want to grab um, where the essentially where the fabric of that lampshade would be. So it might be easier for me to isolate the lamp all by itself, go to a front view, press F, and then go to face mode. Let's turn off the grid, right, make it easier for us. And I'm just going to hit shift period to grow the selection just a little bit. There we go. Nice. So I grew the selection of the lampshade with shift period. Right click and hold and say assign material to selection. Now that that's attached, turn off the um, isolate. Oh, and one last thing. Uh, that material I just assigned to it. This guy right here. I'm going to do a few things just to try and mimic it looking a certain way. Now, before I go too carried away, let me just do a save as, which is a good thing before this actually kills on me. Save a new version just uh, so I don't lose any work. And then um, translucency, I'm going to crank that up. You can already see it changing a little bit. And let's increase the focus a little bit. See what that looks like.
Now, the cool part of this, because I only applied it to the center, not the top and the bottom. That's just a default shader or another material I could put on it, like what would be wood or something. So the lighting is only showing in that center. And uh, we basically are getting this effect. Not as in intense as I want it yet, but we're getting this nice little effect that it's actually... Um, working and it's actually uh, there's a light source that's inside of there and the lighting on this wall is looking much much more realistic much better look at that in comparison to where we started from just with a few tweaks okay and if I want to continue that then I would just um, I could increase my translucence And adjust the focus itself of how it's focused. I can sometimes just grab a section and just uh, render that section here using the second one and um, able to recalculate just a small area which should render it faster. The only problem is sometimes when it has to calculate everything to get the effect that you want it's not a hundred percent accurate but just so you can kind of see if I go oh focus it's zero And we get it kind of washed out a little bit. Then if I crank the focus way high, it's actually kind of interesting, see? So what we're looking for is that uh, that happy medium. That's what we're going for. Where it looks like there's more of a light source in the center. And I'm just going to crank that puppy up just to make it look really intense in there. See that? And it's a fine-tuning thing. So I might tone it down just a little bit, but you get the idea. And I, if I wanted to, I could try and add a tiny, tiny little glow. Just be careful, because the glows do uh, get out of hand really quickly. Um, they can be mighty intense and it's a post process so it happens right after that actually looks kind of cool we're getting a little bit of a glow inside of there see so if I do the entire piece sorry this video is taking so long but it'll give you a lot to look at then I'm getting that table I'm getting a nice little pop see how it's here and you notice how as I start tweaking and adding more things how we start to get definitely more um, we definitely start getting more render time where it takes longer so you have been warned uh, when you add some cool stuff uh, it, it takes longer to render and typically um, the cooler it is the longer it takes I might even give it a really light transparency, but check that out. That looks that looks kind of nice. I mean, and we could still push that and make it more realistic, but it's it looks like a lamp. It looks like a light source that's coming from there. Stronger light here. Um, only one last render, and then I swear that's it. 
I'm going to saturate this just a wee bit more. Get that more saturated. And the reason I want to do that is just that's going to give me that's going to give me um, more of a contrast between the the white light of the um, uh, the bulb coming and then the light passing through the surface of that material and taking some of that color and throwing it. And I tweak it out. Maybe it's a little bit too much, but you get the idea where I start to pull that and warms the room up. And we have a definite uh, difference between the light coming through this surface and then the white light that's pure, not getting color passing through the surface and hitting the area. So I might desaturate it a little bit, but more than what it was. Cool.